Team, team with Death. Ninja before he retired. I was oh, yeah. about to say Ninja. Yeah. <laughs> literally, yeah. I'll never forget, right when we had lost, Tyler literally got up, ran over to the, because we were at DreamHack. Yeah. And he ran over to go play H1Z1 solos. Right after <laughs> yeah. like, he, he just like <laughs> it was just like a fist just bump. He's like, all right, like, okay, <laughs> GG's, and then he like off, off, over. off the scene. <laughs> off the that was his last tournament. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> ever, ever, ever. <laughs> Never saw him again. <laughs> Feeling better than I ever been. Cairo in his bag, this beat is heaven sin. Back up in my element, new whip, trunk up in the front. I whip an elephant. It's all limo tent. That's how you move when you the president. All right, we are back again with another Inner Circle. This one's brought to you by Scuff, and I'm surrounded by some some world champions. So I, I don't get yeah, production. Can we get a fucking round of applause for? It's just <laughs> that's unbelievable. I was hoping there'd be like a like a bunch of people. Everyone's but, way too focused. Yeah, you guys are all locked in. Why are you guys so locked? Um, but yeah, how's how's off season been for you guys since the since the dub? Fantastic. Yeah, the break has been nice for me. Almost too chill. Yeah. You're almost, to almost too much not going on. <laughs> We're so used to the six days a week of uh, grinding. Yeah, yeah. So going to from six to zero was was quite the adjustment. Yeah, the the, the scrim schedule is pretty um, severe, I guess. And especially in leading up to worlds, yeah. Yeah, yeah. especially for us. Anybody. Yeah. Y'all, y'all getting like how many sets a day were y'all getting? Just one. Just one. But yeah. those the, those scrims still go for like a good three three and a half hours wow. if it's like a full scrim. And we could even, we even cut them short because there's 17 game types. Or at least there was 17 game types. Holy hell. And we would typically only play like 13, 14. And we would be, uh, we would still cut out like some of the ones that would be a little bit shorter, but it, it goes pretty hard. Yeah. Like it takes a long time. Yeah. Well, I mean, I hate to hit you with the uh, cliche question, but like, how did it feel, especially for, for you two, uh, coming off of, you know, your first ever chip and then, uh, and then now you're world champions. I mean, how'd that feel? That just felt amazing. Yeah. It's like literally going from, I don't know, there's like, I, I think I said in one of the interviews the other day, I was like, we literally went from like what one of the best feelings is, like getting that first win to like getting the biggest win, <laughs> yeah. like back to back. Yeah. I was like, that's actually crazy to, for us to kind of experience what, like five it. Weeks, it's it's so kind of completely opposite yeah. from Brad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're playing for such a long time and then getting that, you know, world championship and then you guys play uh, getting your first win. I mean, that's yeah. got to be the biggest that's literally the biggest gap I think you can get. Yeah, I mean, we yeah. were still we we had a while to reach this point, but yeah. it was all culminating to this yeah. to kind of get that that sweetness. Oh, yeah. Have y'all been playing Halo since? No. No? <laughs> yeah, Especially not him. That's not the only one who hasn't been playing at all. Oh, okay. I've been grinding in the depths of matchmaking. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah still watch out. Jason just getting turned, just <laughs> destroying everyone. It's yeah. the only dopamine I get these days. <laughs> yeah. I just came out with a new update, so. Oh, did they? Yeah, what's, what's in the update? Uh, like a whole bunch of weapon changes, buffs, nerfs. Okay. Um, forge. And Forge, yeah. yeah, yeah. Forge is a huge. lot of fun. Go off campaign. Do you guys think Forge is going to have any sort of impact on the competitive scene? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. They're going to want to put in more Forge maps. There was already going to be Argyle and then the Pit the at pit. some point. Okay. And before season two even fully gets like revved up, those maps are going to be in those, those Forge are... maps. So you think maps are going to be taken away? You're going to add to the 37 They've already been maps. taken. Yeah. Oh, what, so, what's been taken away? Bizarre, Bizarre Flag is out yes. and then Damn. Catalyst Slayer. <laughs> Catalyst yeah. Slayer's out. Okay. Damn. Yeah, oh, those, yeah. Are, those, are, good. those are good. I feel yeah, like those are kind of contentious. Those are definitely the weakest, yeah. probably. I After season know. one, you start kind of removing the the weakest ones and adding in adding in some yeah. new ones. Yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be cool to see Pit Pit played for the twentieth year. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Probably one they forever. could just put it into the uh, the vault and leave. But they they, they, they love to bring How the many Pit. Halos has that been in like for competing? It's Halo three. I mean, they had it in Halo Reach, Halo but we it, well just it, it being four? yeah, it was in three Reach though? four. Wow, no, well, actually, I guess yeah, just those that really. That's three. Yeah. It'd be well, nice to see how it plays in this game. I, I mean, it'd be nice to have a two sniper map. I yeah. feel like. Our guy was two snipers. <laughs> yeah. Plus the 20 other Plus weapons. Fusion right. coil. <laughs> yeah. What's up with the fusion coil? I don't know. <laughs> we thought that was map? a good idea. Yeah, yeah you, get to, you get to King Kong somebody and just map. chuck oh it. God. Chuck it across so the map. Get you can't wait for that. Who is it? Sparty's Twitter. He has a clip of him fusion coiling Gilkey. That's pretty good. So, yeah, I guess now it's time to talk to the two time world champion. 
So lunch, what was it like? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did y'all like that? Pretty good. Nobody was expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on that before. I, uh, so yeah, you won uh, what uh, national championship in t- 2011? Yeah. For Reach, and yeah. then now coaching ch- uh, world champions. Yeah. What's the What's the difference in the grind between those two? I mean, I feel like the grind's always similar, at least on teams that I've been a part of. Like, I feel like work ethic has always been very important. So. If I'm involved, I'd like to think that that's kind of yeah, at least the expectation amongst everybody. Like we're gonna show up for practice every night and make it worthwhile. So yeah. the grind, I think, is similar. Uh, Worlds is probably bigger just because it's a bigger stage. Yeah, even than the national championships back then. The, there's more on the line now. There's uh, more eyes on it. Yeah. So yeah, this one, this one was, this one was fun to be a part of for me, especially how they did it, mm-hmm. uh, losing the first series and the and the finals and the. Yeah. rebound how they did like it's it really doesn't happen yeah. I mean to have that quick of a uh, switch flip yeah. to turn around yeah it was impressive to watch what is the coaching difference like between 2011 and what you do now and I also want to ask Matt the difference between coaching and, and Cod and Halo yeah I, I mean I'd like to think that I can bring more to the table than a lot of guys because of how long I played I'm definitely recognizing things unfolding negatively or positively faster than I think most. Um, so I think I bring that because I can I can see where positions maybe are not being filled in where I can just say like we need tower on live fire or something or yeah. uh, I'm sure most guys are not doing that, most coaches. So I think there's things that I can bring that other people can't and that's it just comes from experience. I feel like I've played at the highest level for a lot of years. So yeah. I know Halo, whether I'm competing or coaching, I still feel like I have a good grasp on how it should be played. I told him earlier this season that like if he wasn't coaching, I still think he could be a player at this point. Like yeah. this, just the pool of players and like how good I still think he is, like I think he could still be competing. So. My issue now is that like I'll randomly have like an in- inconsistent day where I just like don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> it still is, it, it eats me alive. I played a random matchmaking game that I matched with you guys at Orlando and I went like five and 25 and you just looked over at me and like, you playing? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what was happening. I, I, I would have fixed it if I knew. But anyway, so I, I mean, I can still, I can still compete. Uh, you know, with at least semi pros. Uh, but yeah, yeah what, I still enjoy it. What's the difference between COD coaching and Halo coaching? Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'll die on this hill that I think COD coaches are literally useless. Okay. I think COD coaches just do stuff that the players don't want to do, like scheduling scrims and talking. Oh, okay. To- to their team and saying like which lobby to join and like I don't know in my experience with coaches it's like they tell you the other team's break offs whatever I mean we could do that you could go look yourself and just go watch the YouTube video like they're not doing anything I think it's like you know too hard and I just feel like I don't know especially with like how much weight players put into coaches these days it seems like they're actually affecting how they're playing and I just like I just think it's useless to be honest but in Halo I think like a coach is obviously on stage with you so that's like really important. Like yeah. you, there's another voice in the comms rather than just like a voice after the game's over. And um, like Jason's, I, I mean, I think the best coach in the league for sure. Like he was also like a, a winner, you know, like he was winning a lot. So like he knows the little things to say in the middle of a tournament, in the middle of a game that just helps you like edge the other team out at the end. And that's like really, really important. And um, yeah, I think Halo coaches are way more beneficial. Yeah. And I guess just in general, uh, there was a clip that, you know, kind of got spread around a couple of days ago of Shotzi saying like, Eventually in his career, he's going to go back because he misses he misses his roots, I guess, of Halo. Is that how you felt as well? Because I, I've always been curious because the COD community embraced you so hard, but you've also everyone knew that you were you know you hadn't reached your full potential in Halo when you left. So yeah, did you feel that way, or or did you or like how do you feel about like your home game? I mean, like it was kind of a bummer that like when I started to like hit my like peak in Halo, like the game kind of died. Right. It was um. Yeah, that was really unfortunate because I wish I could have played like the Glory Days of Halo 3. Um, I got like Reach, which was like looked down upon by like the rest of the pros. Like Halo 2 even would have been like fun as fuck. But I mean, like at the same time, it's like I also grew up in like the perfect era of of video games where like I can play when they're as big as they are now. And that's like obviously awesome. But when I was done with COD, like Halo has always just been like a, a game that's really fun for me just to play casually and like compete in. So. I always was like interested in going back, and then I know, the stars kind of aligned. That was a good way to dodge the question. It was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know you're Very diplomatic. It. Yeah, it was. Wait, did I? I got a, I got a, uh, I got a trivia question. Four thousand seventy-five days. What do you think that signifies? Somebody's got to 
4,700. That's a lot of days. That's a lot of days, right? That's a lot of days. I mean, that's Just over 10 win. years. Yeah. Uh, the last time I won a tournament. Ah, there it is. is yeah, it? your first tournament win all the way up until your tournament win uh, at Worlds. 4,075 days. Me yeah, Matt. you. Me? Uh, oh, damn. Yeah, From that your first dub oh, wow. until that's actually Worlds. Insane. That's, that's insane. 4,075 days. Wow. That's legend status. I not feel like it. <laughs> 4,000 days? 4,000 days? 4,000 days. <laughs> How many years is that? That's like over 10 years. Years. Over, like way over years. Way over 10 years, years. yeah. That's one thing about the storylines yeah. in our team is there's some pretty crazy ones. With obviously Tom and Joey having the success this this season of Infinite, Matt winning two world championships, Brad's longevity. Like, yeah. It, all of them are very typical and impressive in their own rights. Mm-hmm. Longevity in particular in esports is one of the hardest things to be. Really like yeah. for me, like <laughs> I, I lost the drive to to compete, like right. grind out like these other guys were. So that's yeah. where, like my, I I fell off. Yeah. But it like, <clears throat> if you still have the passion, I feel like you can compete well into your thirties. Like I don't feel like that age is yeah. just where you just lose your skill all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Yeah, August twenty eighth was MLG Rally. August twenty eighth, twenty eleven. Does not feel like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So kind of like uh, what you were just saying is a. We've talked about it on the Optic podcast before. Do you think the, uh, do you think the, the push to retirement for esports players is more of a physical thing, or if you think it's more of a passion thing? Because you're, you're still going, you know, winning the highest tournament, uh, at you know, longer than I see a lot of other pe- people have, got, come and gone, you know, since you you started put, like winning. So, I think you- it's uh, I think it's definitely like a passion thing, but I think it's also like a financial security type of thing. Mm-hmm. So. I guess like nowadays you get more of like that financial security where you can make this more of a career and an actual job rather than like uh, something you do on the side and might make a little prize money from it and then like actually have to have like a normal nine to five job or just like a normal working job. But I think like nowadays you can play as long as you want, as long as you feel like you're, you can live like a normal life and you can also compete. So I think that's like something like, at least I feel like I can, feel, I can play until I'm like 30 or something. Yeah. Uh, 30, mm-hmm. like two or something like that. So I don't feel like I have to slow down anytime soon. Yeah. So the passion's still there for Halo. Mm-hmm. And you're pretty much like Halo or nothing, right? You're not like yeah. a gamer outside of Halo. <laughs> I just say, I, I say I'm like a Halo normal game. He's a Halo yeah, yeah. guy. I'm a normal person who's like good at Halo. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really play many other games. I'm just really good at Halo. Yeah. Uh, Except well, Codenames. Yeah, code names. Certainly Codenames. Code <laughs> <laughs> what is Codenames? It's like a party game. Um, nice. I'm trying to like think of the way to describe it, but you have like teams of people and it's like it's like a mental type of game. It's like a certain leader of each team has to like have their own teammates guess words. So like guess the right like cards. No. 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 Okay. Again, completely like separate like game. Some sort of split gate thing. No, right? no. not at all. <laughs> okay. But it helps. It helps. That's it's like a good it like mental? yeah. It's like a good like puzzle like type of figuring things out type yeah. of game. We've all been playing it a lot, like especially before like worlds and whatnot. It's just yeah. something to play. Yeah. It's been good. Yeah, every day after scrims, I just see Matt or Brad just type in the the Halo Pro Discord, and there's like one for code names. Everyone else is like one for eights. <laughs> there's like one for code names. That's so good. Allow me to interrupt the inner circle for one quick second while we talk about Scuff. Uh, Scuff has provided these beautiful presents to all of the boys for winning the World Championships. I mean, it's I mean, they're just a great company to work with. We've been work we've been working with uh, Scuff for like seems like over ten years now. Um, and uh, you know they're they're just the best controllers on the market. So definitely go pick up uh, Scuff at uh, scuffgaming.com and make sure to use the optic ones because they'll give you more aim assist and uh, you'll play better and it'll get more hair on your chest. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much to Scuff for uh, for making all this happen. Uh, the inner circles are a lot of fun and um, you know couldn't have done it without you guys. So let's get back to the video. <laughs> yeah, I think a, a like. Probably the the best part of this team is you guys. You know, you've got the veterans on one. I mean, I, did y'all plan this? <laughs> the veterans on one side, and then you got uh, you know <laughs> wow. the relatively you know new guys uh, on this side. Uh, some, it's something that we see in a lot of esports, and I kind of won- wonder what you guys. You know, you guys have come up as a duo, but you also came up alongside of a bunch of other grinders like you know Frosties, Renegades, mm-hmm. um, Shotzi. Uh, whenever you guys come up and you see the class that you're coming up with, do you have a sense of camaraderie with those guys or is it competitive? You want to be the best new um, guy on the block. I'd say it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Because okay. you, you don't, you don't want to like 
not be friends with them. You right. know, you, you gotta, you gotta, you're still gonna be friends with the people. A little bit of banter. A little bit, and yeah. Just competitive bit drive for there. sure. Yeah. But, but I mean, especially with like Renegade for sure. Like, yeah. It was us two and then Renegade and Shotzi. Us four were like the breakout people in like literally the span of like two to three months of Halo 5, like all at the same time. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. that's like when all four of us pretty much started competing at the same time at so that you point. Got, you guys have your, uh, yeah. your race to certain. I guess. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Goals. They they hit their stride and they had some banger teams. And I mean, we still had some great teams too. But yeah, I think we've definitely been figuring our way through. And obviously, we're here now. But yeah, you know, it's it's been a it's been a journey. Yeah. It really has been. Yeah. <laughs> the picture of these two from years ago when you guys were first first oh, started competing with one another to the world's picture was such a good side by side. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. insane. It showed a little bit of the journey that you two have been through. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and you got—I mean, you guys are no uh, no stranger to competing with uh, with legends. I mean, you got y'all y'all teamed with uh, uh, Ola for so long, and I mean, you Ola, yeah, you've—I mean, didn't you team with Snipedown too? Snipedown, Snipedown as well, down. yeah. I, I knew there was. Uh, so I mean, he was with Ninja death before he retired. I was oh yeah, I was yeah. Ninja, yeah. <laughs> literally, yeah. I'll never forget. Right when we had lost, oh, Tyler literally got up, ran over to the because we were at DreamHack. Yeah, and he ran over to go play H1Z1 solos. He just like <laughs> it was just like a fist bump. He's like, lost, he's like, all right, like, okay, <laughs> GG's, and then he like walks off, over off the scene. <laughs> off the that was his last <laughs> tournament. Never saw him again. That's really good. Oh man. But I mean, obviously, it was the right decision. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, it's like one of those things. Like, yeah, 100%. you did the right thing. So, what, what was this season like for for you two, uh, especially? Be like, the Halo Infinite comes out. You know, you make one roster change. Uh, you know, you get a, a legendary coach, and you have your ups and downs throughout all, all the years or throughout the whole season. Um, I mean, what do you think specifically like changed and made you guys go in the right direction? Um. In my opinion, I think like we still kind of experienced that instant drive to try to be the best at the very start of the game, which I think we had some good success with, but then it caught up to us pretty quickly. And I think after those first two tournaments, it definitely felt like making a change uh, with like Matt being on the team. I think it kind of changed, at least for me personally, it changed the way I view of like how to get better as a team. Like just having somebody new that I hadn't really talked to, experienced anything with at all, like that was something that I think pushed me to like figure out how I can talk with the team and like they talk to me and like figuring that type of thing out, I think really pushed that team aspect in my mind for us. I think that's been really important. Yeah. And I would, I mean, I, I would have to give huge credit to Matt. Mm -hmm. I mean, soon, when he, as soon as he joined, like the whole, I mean, I would definitely say the whole time, team, like the whole team dynamic changed instantly. And like Tommy said, it kind of, kind of goes back to the thing of where it's like we're talking as a team and trying to work work at, at things as a team and yeah. it's, it's not like we were, weren't doing that in the past but it kind of it kind of hit a new stride and it yeah. hit another level that's so. why I think it was that's why I want to say because you know if Ola happens to hear any of this it's like he was never a bad teammate ever right he, he had no like really no ego at all it was just again I think with like adding Matt to the roster with just him still being the player that he was and then again, just having somebody new, cause it's like, I think that is the double-edged sword whenever you have like a new type of relationship that can develop. It's like, it can be good, it can be bad. Right, so it's like, yeah. you wanna kinda like field out some options. So it's like, as long as you're, everyone's just honest and like just everyone's trying to put their best foot forward, like you get the results that we got. I yeah, think yeah. whenever everyone really tries their absolute hardest. From the outside looking in, it seemed like Ola and Brad, you know, on the same team kind of playing the same role and uh, you know, just adding Matt onto the team, it just kind of meshed everything where it was supposed to be. That's got, at least from the outside looking in. That's what I, I don't know how accurate. Yeah, I, I mean, is. I knew instantly when Matt was coming. Like, I mean, and their their history together alone, like they're they've been best friends for so long. You yeah. Know? And that, I feel like that's already a chemistry right there. You know. Yeah. On on top of them being gods. He was worried so. about you guys. He was talking to me. He was like, I don't know, if, I don't know if they're gonna like me. <laughs> That's what I was saying, yeah. yeah, I was but saying he, that. <laughs> I remember that. Um, crazy. So, do you think Streets Ball was uh, was a very pivotal point in uh, you guys taking you guys taking the last two champions or the two tournaments? Losing in that fashion, yes. Yeah, that was Absolutely. the best thing that happened to yeah. us, probably. Yeah. yeah, in the worst, best way best possible. And worst way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like an eye opener for yeah. I think just us as a team. I think 
in, in my mind, it's like that drive to just, you know, we just put our heads down. We weren't like making any changes. It's like, we're here to get better. We know our problems and we just talked it out. We went over it. It was difficult to like, obviously watch losing in that heartbreaking yeah. of fashion. But I like, dude, that, that's the stuff that puts hair in your chest. Like that yeah, type yeah. of it recognition. Never it never happened again. Never happened again. Yeah. That, yeah. that was the game that like, the win con was all in our favor and we, and we lost it. So like, once you see that happen, like, hey, a lot of times a game like that can lead to a team breaking up. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. there's a lot of tough conversations that happened in uh, Kansas City after yeah. we lost that tournament. But like, these guys, you know, we had them and again, we looked forward. Like, they, the potential we knew was there. Like, these guys haven't lost a script, like any scrims. That yeah. doesn't happen very often either where you're that dominant online and yeah. just winning night in and night out, like, and, and badly. There's a lot of scrims. Like, yeah. if, if a team takes three or four games from them in practice, they felt like they won. I was going to say we are like, annoyed. Like, it's, <laughs> it's been that weighted for a long time. So, yeah. again, that, like that, I think it was a very pivotal, ga- pivotal game. Unfortunately, it was a loss. Um, but it couldn't have ended the season any better. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. And that definitely – Yeah. I mean, you see that all the time in esports and sports in general. It's just like you come up, you you get past that that adversity, and then you come out better on top. Yeah. Um, Matt, I want to ask you. It's been a while since you know this happened, but while you're up there playing for Sentinels, you know Royal Two did his thing or whatever, and you had to fill in for Royal Two. Um, while you're playing Optic, did you think <laughs> at all that maybe that would be your future? Is playing for either your you know home team or just trying to find a, a stable team in general. I mean, my gamer tag was literally optic formal mat. <laughs> oh, I had to, so had to. It was definitely in the back of my mind. So troll. I just knew, I knew that like if I was going to keep playing for the whole year, that optic was going to have to be like my home. Yeah. Like, and they were disgusting. Like it was just like I was thinking it was like a perfect fit. Um, I didn't, I didn't want to say like a mastermind of getting on the squad, but like they had like, you know, poor placing in Raleigh, then a poor placing in Anaheim. And I knew they were going to be interested in, you know, making a change just because they obviously wanted to win. And um, I mean, I hit him up and then you know, the stars aligned this whole year. To be he, was laying the, he was laying the seeds okay. for a while. Yeah, I played, don't I, let him like, like, like try to talk your way around that too much. All right, I'm a natural like seed planter. <laughs> He's a farmer. It's yeah. just, um, I mean, like, I'm just really like um, involved in the scene, like with players, like in COD where Halo, like I'll have a lot of friends outside of my team and like I'll always keep tabs on people just because like it's, it's, um, it's nice to know what's going on and, you know, whether or not I throw my little two cents into their situations is, <laughs> you know, it's controversial, but. He had been planting seeds since like after the first <laughs> online tournament. <laughs> I was saying, you're probably the best person to ask He, pl- he planted a seed after the game five too, because what'd you have, 20? Yeah. In that streets game five? <laughs> it was a big game five, I remember that. Oh yeah. It was, like it was a big game five. Yeah. <laughs> it was on your birthday too, right? It was. Because I remember tweeting, happy birthday to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was my birthday? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was that a game five on your birthday? Yeah. That's fate. <laughs> it was boring. It was, it was meant sure. you had, did, you, did you have the, the, the best average placing last year? I think so. I think yeah. I saw a stat that you did. I didn't realize that. I mean, so, yeah. It's pretty typical. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I guess it's time to talk about the, the future of Halo. So season starts back up in, uh, in February. Um, and what, do you, what would you guys like to see, I guess, implemented into um, – the game itself, but also HCS and how things are running. Um, I feel like there just needs to be like a type of unionization almost of like players and HCS working with players. I think, especially with like how Halo 5 was set up by the end of its like life cycle for esports, it's or the esports side of it, that should have, that's still for a majority of things for Infinite has been the case. Like the ecosystem has been solid, but especially for just like how pro, pro players are feeling, it's like, there's just like weapons or certain tunings for certain things that are just not available or they are unwilling to make, change their stance on for the sake of the casual community, which is like the good thing to do, but they're trying to like create a universal experience for everybody. That's just, I don't know. I I personally don't think that ever has worked out in most circumstances. Like we've had a mangler on every map that's been on since the start of the game and we haven't picked it up in like nine months. Yeah. Oh, so the mangler's still on? Yeah. We GA it after the first tournament? Mangler got G8, I think, like, after, after Anaheim. Anaheim. Yeah, 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 after Anaheim. So here's the thing: like, I've I've noticed like it happened in the COD scene as well, like this um, same problem, to where 
you got people that are working on on the game nonstop, right? Or you'd like to think they're working on it nonstop, and they release these like new weapons and stuff. <clears throat> And the devs are excited for you to try it. They want you guys to be playing on stream. They want you guys to be showing off the, pretty much their creation, right? And then you have a lot of players that um, just don't know how to go about it the right way. They don't know how to criticize the right way, so they end up just kind of crying. And obviously, like, if I'm a dev, like, and this is just, like, in their defense. Like, if I'm a dev, I'm just going to feel sour towards that. It's because I'm like, dude, I just put, like, three months into that, and you're just shitting on it. Yeah. And, and then that leads to a natural disconnect between the players and the devs, and then it feels like almost there's, like... Um, some uh conflict which doesn't really need to be there but i don't think anyone really understands like if you guys want to like changes to happen you have to do it the right way you can't just sit there and cry on stream and, and then things are gonna, like fixed tomorrow it's just never going to be how it is ever so like i just think that players need to just kind of grow up and like i said i see it in the cock community as well it's yeah. just it's just a recurring thing i keep saying and you know it's it's, it's kind of shit like it's kind of shitty seeing it because i can see both sides of it like i'm a player i can see like there's problems with the game but like i also don't really have like a good like contact with 343 right there's not really anyone i can like text on the side and just yeah. be like hey man i know that i've seen a lot of slack about this and like is there any like you know plans to change this and it's like people just assume shit and then just kind of rage on stream and then it gets clipped and then you know it gets it gets yeah. like blown up on twitter and like it's not a good look for the game it's not a good look for the player it's just like um the same circle i keep saying it's kind of shit was it was the communication better in call of duty no cdl or was it better? No. Crazy, I mean, like in CDL, like you could once it switched to the CDL, like you had a little bit more of a connection just because it was franchised at that point. But there's still it's still not where it should be. Like when yeah. you look at games like League of Legends or Valorant or, you know, Riot does a really good job with like fixing the game and listening to the pros because they make a competitive game. So yeah. like if there's anything wrong with it, they immediately fix it. And it's just like I've played the like, only games I've played. It's just been like, you know, it's a casual game that's made to force into competitive. So there's just always going to be that like disconnect there. And, yeah, right. Do you think, I mean, I, I know already, I kind of already asked this, but do you think like uh, with Forge coming out, uh, Halo uh, and AFCS would be willing to utilize a majority of the, of the you know, maps that are going to be made and the game types that are going to be made through Forge? Because it seems like it's pretty built out. It'd be silly of them not to. It's just people doing their work for them yeah, you know, right, for free, right, like right, making right, maps yeah. that they literally put zero, they just have to give them the tool yeah. and then they do the work. So like, why would you at least not? explore what people are making and yeah to me it's it's a win-win yeah, i've already i already have people coming in my stream telling me to like try out a competitive map that people made like people have already been making competitive people maps, are very so passionate about they're very, yeah they're very very passionate. which is yeah, good for halo uh, and the competitive scene we have we used to, uh, uh quite a few forge maps in halo 3 but, you yeah. know like they've always been a part of, of yeah. the competitive scene yeah and, and in reach yeah, yeah reach, reach there's a lot yeah there was in reach it was like and so they were like, awful. Yeah, I was just saying, like every map was like gray. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, now they have tools so to make it look good. Know, like yeah. I think there's a lot of potential. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, some of the maps we've seen, they literally look like they literally look like a recharge or live fire. At least yes. it's like yeah. those maps obviously, are, at least live fire kind of looks almost like right. a forge map and <laughs> off the rip. But it's like the detail, the level of detail will become insane yeah. for, for Halo because uh, it's only the beta out right now, right? Yeah, and yeah. It still yeah. looks incredible. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, I mean, I saw someone make. Rainbow Road on Mario Kart. Did y'all see that? I, I don't know if I saw that one. Wow. Literally that, Rainbow, yeah. and they're all on this like tiny little. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> and just going, it, it, it looked incredible. Yeah. yeah. Forge is insane, man. Yeah. It, it is definitely the saving grace, I think, for a while for yeah. Halo. It's just a matter of like making sure that the actual game itself is becoming even more functional and just the best experience it can possibly be. I think that's what's been holding back the game for a while now. And it's just, you gotta, the Halo just needed like good consistent press and it's like I think Forge right now is like that really great press that I don't know if it can really sour like you're seeing Rainbow Road we saw like Toy Story we're seeing right. Ocarina of Time like Forge maps <laughs> and there's also like competitive maps being made that probably are going to be pretty solid that can be tested out it's like there's just a good consistent flow of just cool shit yeah and I don't see that really stopping it's just a matter of like you know as long as there's the yeah. rest of the community still wants to be a part of it, it should yeah. just keep getting better. Has there ever been a Forge map that wasn't a remake of an old Halo map that made it onto the... Yeah. Amplified yeah. Re Reach, onslaught. there was a lot. Reach, there wasn't? Okay. Yeah. Oh, it was a lot. Like Reach. Nexus. Yeah, Oasis, Redemption, Redemption. Redemption. Yeah. Oh, okay. Element. I, was I, like I can't shit remember which ones were yeah, there was a shit and not. There was a couple Halo, uh, Halo 5 ones, too. 
Those are not that great. But <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the ones in Reach were really bad, actually. Yeah, a lot of the Forge maps were horrible. Yeah. Uh, they were, <laughs> that we had to play on. So I guess we could say the track record right now is not the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think it was all like, Andrew, was that because of like yeah, how it played? Or like the, 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 the spawns, I remember, were a problem, I feel like, on the Forge maps in Reach. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I remember the spawns being really bad on some of the Reach maps. Oh, I don't remember. Uh, the Forge maps. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember, play, I remember playing Pit in Reach, and it just all looked great. Yeah. blue, right? Yeah. Blue yeah. and gray. Yeah. just great, dude. Just gray. Yeah. 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 Just gray. Gray. Now you can see, like, yellow and purple for yeah. this version. <laughs> well, it's kind of cool, right? Like Cyberpunk vibes. Yeah, it does have know, a little bit of Hopefully it'll be even more yeah. detailed. It's but better than yeah. gray. Yeah, when you think Forge in this game goes crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I think, yeah, the potential is yeah. probably People already have, like, Duck Hunt and Jenga, all the OG maps. Yeah. And that's only in the first couple of days, so yeah, there's no telling what they can do in a couple of weeks. I was talking to Nick in the Flycast um, a couple episodes ago about how power weapons have changed in Halo, and um, about how like it's kind of e it seems like it's easier to use on PC, and now like the power weapons I don't he I don't know, but the power weapons are a little bit more powerful than they used to be. Is that? Mm, I no. think that just no? say that I think a little bit. Wouldn't it? I would just no. guess. I maybe a little bit of that comes down to you know use you. Back then, 60 FPS. Right. And nowadays, it's 240. Yeah. And even last night, when this guy was <laughs> hijacking my Steam, I was on 60 FPS for a little bit during my stream last night. Oh, even, terrible. even just being on that for one game, the difference from six, like, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. just like, opening your eyes. So Made even, you to see that. Even just like shooting a little power up and on 60 FPS compared to 240, like, it's just night and day. Yeah. So maybe a little bit of that. And 30 FPS or, or even 30, whatever yeah, it was in Halo 3. 3. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I mean, ro nothing's getting better than Halo 1 rockets. I mean, those are by far the most powerful power weapon yeah. of any Halo. Those were a literal nuke. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that was an airstrike. You didn't even have actually, to shoot yeah. a good rocket. <laughs> we just yeah. got the kill. Yeah. Pretty so much. I guess what I'm asking for, or asking uh, is. It seems like a big backlash that Halo Infinite had is that there in a lot of the competitive maps there's not two snipers, there's no dueling snipers, there's no, yeah. you know, uh, it seemed like there were manglers everywhere, but there wasn't that like, uh, I guess especially with the snipes there weren't that dueling snipers or the dueling, sh what is what's it called? The shock, shock rifle. Shock rifle, yeah. Um, do you think it would be too powerful to have two two of those on the map, or do you think it's something that Halo needs? It depends on the map. Yeah. I th that's very much why we don't have any of the men right now like the only map that could have maybe even potentially had something would have been like bizarre and i don't know like having bizarre with two snipers kind of sounds like it sounds awful terrible that sounds those, really bad yeah, yeah. Just too, that's just so much pre aim exactly like that, that. kind of comes down to the maps though yeah which you know that hopefully that can be something that keeps getting worked on alleviated in the future but I feel like so many people too with that argument just like go back to thinking about like how much they enjoyed watching Pit, like a Pit CTF, a 15 minute Pit CTF. But like that game, that game type was could also be very stalemate, -y, like a zero zero game, 10 minutes in. Like I don't yeah. think that's necessarily entertaining to watch. You know, not much objective being capped. So yeah. it'd be I, interesting to see how it plays in this. I game. guess I always think Sanctuary because it's a little. Yeah, San and Sanctuary was definitely always a good map in every Halo. Yeah. HOA was good. Halo uh, Three was. Funny good. enough, with Halo Five, we. Uh, like with the restrictions on ammo that are in place now for like the power weapons, that actually came about because of Halo 5's version of Sanctuary. Really? Because people were starting, <laughs> people were sitting ring three with like 20 sniper shots. <laughs> and oh the spawn God. system on that map was like so bad that you would like almost always exclusively spawn like in the open, in the rocks, with no cover, <laughs> off respawn. Dude, I'll never Every forget time. a game of Duck Hunt. Exactly. I'll never forget Ryan, we got like a kill Tassifee on us. Oh, that was H2A though. <laughs> he was just like ring three looking at our spawn. We spawned back. I was left. doing that too. Huh? Yeah. I was on that team at the time. <laughs> don't forget that. Yeah. Actually, that might have been I don't know. He was just doing his trolling thing. <laughs> okay, yeah. H2A was a zone beast, but, but that was when like snipers literally spawned with like 12 shots each, and then there was yeah. a rock, it's like, with like four in Halo 5, and we're yeah. like, we can't do this anymore. Like yeah. each rocket would carry over to the next rocket, each sniper would carry over to the next sniper. So at this point, it's like a little bit more reserved, but I think it plays out a lot better now. Have y'all started scrimming or anything on the pit or any? Oh, it's not even out yet. It's not out. I thought it'd come out with this Forge update. Yeah, yeah. 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 Would have, you would have thought. <laughs> yeah. But it's a, in a, I think it's, what, another month maybe? Less than a month? I would think it'd be with like the December update that they're planning on doing. They've already announced it in the rotation, so before February, I would think. <laughs> yeah. Surely we get to practice on it. So Grand Final starts. Uh, we're going back to Halo Worlds, and you guys lose the first series. Uh, I'm sure you guys have been asked this a lot, but I haven't been personally able to 
to ask what what is uh, what is it like in between those two series in between the bracket reset uh, and losing that first series? What did you guys did, were you guys able to talk and yeah you know regroup? Yeah, uh, that was the first time we actually all all of us got to go back and uh, talk for like five ten minutes, just about what we did wrong, what we could have done better. Those those extra minutes to just all be away from the setup, just away from it all. I think it was very important. We, uh, I've said a lot of times now, but like at that point, we literally, we were all saying the exact same thing mid series, each game that kept passing, like, okay, I think we need to do this, this and that. We would still all listen and like, we all still made our peace, but then, you know, the series finished, things are tense at that point. And obviously we're feeling a little bit of the pressure, but we all went back and said the exact same things. Like, I don't think really anything really changed. We all took accountability. It's like, we all know we can play a lot better, all of us. Plain and simple. We all knew we could just play better. But like the general things that we were just talking about, like it just digested. It finally just, yeah. we had a few moments, I think, to just step away, just kind of like take a few deep breaths, really, again, internalize that, you know, the types of criticisms or not even really criticism at that point. It's just like, you know, we just know we got to play our own game and do our own thing and find our flow. And that's what we were saying the entire time. And yeah, that, that break was good. It was very good for us. Stopped them basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we I think we could all we all felt that like switch flip instantly. Yeah. Especially after game one, because game one was still a little bit of a battle until the third round. Yeah. But uh, you know, game two, three, and four we could we could you could just feel it. Yeah. 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 I uh you know, had the pleasure of seeing Matt in that situation uh, a bunch of times in Call of Duty, either getting knocked down into the loser's bracket or like, you know, being in the winner's side and then getting that bracket reset. And it just seems like you've always played it very cool. You know, and that, do you do that for yourself or do you do that for the team? I mean, both, I guess. I mean, it takes a lot to like rattle me. Yeah. Like, I mean, you have to understand there's always like a chance to win the tournament. And yeah. especially like when we go through winners, you get a whole cushion. Like that's the point of going through winners because you're gonna play a red hot team coming out of losers regardless. Yeah. So like you just have to understand sometimes the other team's gonna be playing really good all along with you guys not playing great, and that's what the first series was. It was us playing bad and them playing like really really good. Yeah. So then the second series started and, and like we kicked it into gear and they kind of started like running out of gas towards the end, which is just like another winners bracket you know pleasure like you just get you get to like abuse that you know you didn't have yeah. to play as much that day they had to play like five series, um, and it's all part of it right it all plays a part and like you should always just understand like. Unless you're out, then you're not out. You know, there's always a chance to there's always a chance to win. I've seen crazy shit. We've all seen crazy shit throughout the years, like crazy comebacks, crazy upsets. Like anything's possible. And like, even if you're not playing great, you could still win a tournament. And even if you're playing great, you might not win the tournament. It's just all part of it. And it's just like you just have to understand all these things and realize like it's not over till it's over. At COD Champs, um, twenty seventeen, you guys, <laughs> you guys lost to Envy, I think, and mm -hmm. uh, or LG. It was Envy and Winners. Envy and Winners. And then I remember there was, it seemed like Damon especially was, Damon and Seth, they're all a little tense after losing. And Matt just comes back stage and goes, we just get to play more now. <laughs> it was like, we just get to play more. And it seemed like it calmed everybody out and then they made that they made that run. I feel like Matt was huge in the final. Like you were the one to initiate us getting up after, the, after that first series loss. It's like, yeah, let's go back and talk. No. It's important to have just, you know, I think it was more than just Matt, but like just having the guys that have, you know, been there and, and keeping the vibes high. Like, all of us were not down on ourselves, I feel like, after the first series. Like, we knew we, we needed played a so much to break better. ourselves. Yeah, exactly. Like, just literally take a break. Yeah. And that's exactly what we did. It's very important. It seemed like the game stole you guys' hero shot, too. God, it did. It stole it. <laughs> Hearing the listening, I'll, you guys are world I know. Champions. I'll take a little blame for it. I was definitely probably a second early on starting nah, the celebration. Nah. The game should never hit but, zero but I, on I, the clock. I was going to say, it was zero seconds on the clock, and somehow we're in overtime. But it's it, so funny because like what Jason did there is sometimes like I'll joke around either if it's like a tournament online or like a scrim online I'll be like all right GG's boys when we need like five seconds left in an oddball or something and then they'll end up four deading us and they'll, they'll just pick up the ball it's kind of like it's the same situation where Jason says that and then <laughs> Zero on zero point zero zero or whatever zero Insane. one. They just hop in the hill. You waited. They still, they still had like, a point zero zero one percent chance of winning, probably. <laughs> yeah. But uh, my butt cheeks puckered <laughs> a little bit for sure after <laughs> I saw the game was still going on and it was sudden death. So yeah, that was funny. No, it's it, it sucks because I mean, it was actually hilarious. I was <laughs> laughing the entire time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Brad Everybody stands. For Brad him. stands up. Literally has tears <laughs> yeah. in his eyes. Brad got yeah, so a meme. I, I have this totally happened to me before where I've celebrated early and I lost against 
I was, I was on the against team. them. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, in Halo 5. But that's like a whole nother story. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but then I was like, in that moment, I'm thinking, like, you see me, like, reach. And I like, because I was like thinking, like, if I if I don't put my headset on and we all die, and I still don't have it on, like, this could just be all my fault. <laughs> but then I see, like, Tommy laughing. He's like, all right, all right, let's just kill them. I hear Tommy just Tommy's go, all right, let's just kill them. Let's just kill them. And you see him, like, laughing. And I'm just like, all right. And we just, I see the spawns that we get. And I'm like, all right, this is fine. I get it. Yeah. 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 We just get yeah I literally, like, looked over to you and be, like, celebrating. And I, I looked at your screen. I looked at my screen. I'm like, sit back. <laughs> like, sit back. <laughs> but he was, like, laughing. So, I, like, it made me feel like I looked like I was tweaking. But in my head, after I saw him laughing, I was like, all right, it's okay. No, I just, <laughs> it, it, from my perspective, it looked like the emotions of winning had yeah. already hit you. Yeah. yeah and now you're trying to force them back out. <laughs> I was, literally, I was literally like, you hear me, like, you can see me like in the little like four person camera. I'm literally like bouncing up and down, like waiting to like celebrate. <laughs> to celebrate again. Like, but I'm just like, I just like, I don't know. The crowd, I think, was the one that caught, caught us off guard because they they were one second ahead. Oh. <laughs> they were a second ahead, then you said, yeah, you guys yeah. Are I'll, I'll, I'll shoulder some of the blame. We won, so it doesn't, really, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> if we would have threw it, I might have uh, not wanted to shoulder that blame. <laughs> um, I guess for, for you guys, how does it feel, uh, I guess, to, to win not only uh, Orlando, but also a world championship um, under the Optic name? Uh, yeah, I mean, I could not ask for a better home to be at to like represent some like an organization and just the people and the fans and everybody it's amazing like I, I don't think there's again there's there's just not another place I would ever want to be same here man I mean I'll never I'll never like not remember that those two wins especially with this team and the family the, the green wall I'll never forget that ever and especially with all the support that we had all our girlfriends were there just the family just like my best buddies from school came down just like yeah. so many people there to make it you know that much more memorable it's it's amazing seriously i mean it's like a, it's a surreal feeling like i've been on optic before but i mean it's nothing like this i mean it was literally like the perfect series of events like the past few months like starting with the super and then orlando all of our families being there seeing us win and then them coming to the world seeing us win again the biggest tournament but um like I don't, honestly, like Tommy said, I couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah. It all started with that birthday win. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, best <laughs> birthday present. Yeah. Best birthday he won play. the Super on his, on his birthday. Hell yeah. They all played out of... Out of here, yeah. Out of here? Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> now, what about... Yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it was as rewarding as it gets, I think. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've been a part of a lot of awards, and I've never been set up for success quite like Optic has for us, just in terms of what they're you know providing us, the facilities that we're practicing at. Everything is just top of the line, and then <clears throat> to to win in the fashion we did, and just be as dominant as they were to finish the season was to end on a win, especially because you're going into the off season knowing you're making zero changes, and you can just sit back, put your yeah. you know your hands on your head, and watch everybody else yeah. scramble to figure out how they're going to beat these guys, and just good luck. <laughs> yeah, it ain't going to be easy. <laughs> Not to be fucking cliche, cliche, I'm sure you've been asked a hundred million times, but. What is it like to, to bring another world championship in a different game? <laughs> I hate the smirk. I it's okay, it. you can smile. <laughs> All right. I mean, like, optics is um, it's OP. Like, everything about it's just like pack a punch. Like, every time you win, <laughs> every time you win, it's just like, it seems like, it seems like the whole world is watching when you win. And I'll see other teams win, and I'm like, no one even gives a fuck. Like, that's what it feels like. And I'm like, damn, that must suck. But like, we all have been like, you know, we've all like put in our time to be here. Like, being on optic is just different, man. That's why OP is like the first two letters of the, like the org, you know? It's just OP. Damn. Yeah. I like that. I like that. It is OP. Yeah. All right, guys. You always got the taglines. You always <laughs> got the taglines. This is how to close out videos. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this for a while. Feeling better than I ever been. Cairo in his bag, this beat is heaven sin. Back up in my element, new whip, trunk up in the front, I whip an elephant. It's all limo tint, that's how you move when you the president. 